Uh, on behalf of Chagish, I'd like to welcome you to this webinar, this really important webinar. Uh, you know, I am uh, Chagish's uh, health and safety specialist, and my background is in agriculture, but I have a diploma in, in uh, uh, occupational health and safety, and I have a doctorate in health and safety adoption, uh, and that, and I lead Chagish's programs. Now, I work with uh, Francis Bly, who is here with me, and, you know, I'd like to thank Francis for organizing this webinar, along with his, uh, his master's student, Penny Gavin, uh, and that, uh, and, uh, you know, we're, we're most anxious to promote uh, health and safety in all its respects among farmers. Uh, just a quick word about Chagish, that uh, we promote the total health model of, of health and safety. In other words, health and safety uh, together. And, uh, you know, they're synergistic. You know, if you're in poor health, you'll have more accidents and uh, maybe vice versa uh, and that. And also, you know, if you're in poor health or have injury, it leads to disability and that leads to loss of productivity and income and it could jeopardize the the, the, the livelihood of a, far, of a family farm. Uh, now, we're, I'm delighted to say that we're uh, going to be joined today by four, uh, sorry, five experts on uh, UV sun skin cancer protection, you know, in Ireland. Uh, Kevin, Barbara, Lynn, Maria and Blohin will be joining us. Uh, so I think, you know, from a Chagish perspective, we can't work on our own. We're agriculturalists, we're communicators, we have a great entree into the farming community, you know, but we need to work with health professionals in order to get the most effective messages across to farmers. Uh, I, I, I have been concerned about uh, our promotion of cancers generally for some time. I was involved with Dr. Breda Smith in her research a number of years ago, and she found that farmers have a three or three times higher instance of cancer than blue collar, white collar workers. Uh, so I think that's something that uh, I think needs to be uh, addressed a bit more vigorously in the farming community. I think UV sunlight, uh, skin cancer protection is, is uh, you know, it's coming to the summer and it is a very significant part of the excess cancer burden. And, you know, that's what this webinar will, will focus on. Now, from a Chagish perspective, uh, we know that farmers give health a lower priority than they do immediate safety actions. Uh, and, that, and that within the health area that they give skin cancer a lower priority than other areas. So I think that, that uh, uh, it's very timely that we run this webinar and uh, promote uh, skin cancer uh, protection. Uh, and you know, from a Chagas perspective, we will be continuing uh, with the uh, cancer prevention group that we have here today to, to, throughout the summer. So thank you very much for your participation. And I'll now hand over to Mr. Kevin O'Hagan, who will uh, chair the rest of the uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, John. And uh... Thanks indeed to Chagas and all your colleagues there at Chagas for, for facilitating the webinar this morning. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to kind of, to reach out to, to the farming community in particular, um, because this is, as you said, John, is, is a really important area uh, for, for the health and well-being of, of, of farmers. Um, I suppose maybe just to thank you all for joining us this morning, uh, particularly people who have joined us from all over the country um, and, and are showing an interest in this particular area. Um, we, I don't want to introduce everyone, but if you wouldn't mind um, just putting your name and maybe where you're from, or if you're from an organization, just put it into the chat box so we have an idea of, of who and where you're from and what, you, what, what your area of work um, might be. So um, if you could do that in the chat box, we'd, we'd be de delighted. So I suppose um, the whole issue of, of, of skin cancer is, is a really important one. In fact, the Irish Cancer Society, where, where I work, um, was formed over 50 years ago, and it was the issue of skin cancer that actually um, led to the, the foundation of, of the organization at that time, because people, uh, it was recognized that people were actually dying from skin cancer, which is in fact a very preventable disease. And I suppose over those 50 odd years, we've continued to, to kind of promote 
uh, sun protection, uh, sun, sun awareness and, and the dangers of, of, of the, UV, the UV. Uh, and, and I suppose tried to do our best to encourage people to, to be sun smart. Uh, and so we continue that work today. And um, as, as, as um, the numbers of, of cancers in general increases very significantly. In fact, we have a, an 85% increase in cancers overall over, over the last 30 years. But the incidence of skin cancer has really, I suppose, traveled and, and is expected to, to continue to, to increase quite substantially over the next 20 years. Um, I suppose today you're going to hear some very frightening statistics. Um, and while, you know, we're very mindful of, of those statistics, there's a lot we can do in the area of, of skin cancer prevention. And, and we're delighted to kind of share that information with you today. We know there's over 13,000 skin cancers per annum, and that's 230 deaths per week. And unfortunately, farmers and outdoor workers are particularly at risk. Uh, in fact, you're up to three times more exposed to, to UV radiation from the sun, which increases your risk of skin cancer. We know that about one in four skin cancer deaths are among the farming and the outdoor community. Um, and you know we, we don't have a good record internationally Ireland ranks 10th in the EU for melanoma detection and 12th in the world. You know, Australia and New Zealand obviously are up there, but we're very high in Europe. So we have a very high rate of, of skin cancer. And, and so you'll hear maybe the reasons behind that throughout this, this morning's presentation. Um, I suppose the good news is skin cancer is very preventable and it's probably the most preventable of all cancers. And, and we'll hear this morning how, how, what you can do, simple steps to kind of reduce your risk of skin cancer. Um, so this morning I'm joined by, by three of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Barb McGrogan, who's who from the National Cancer Control Program, Lynn Swinburne from the National Screening Service, and Maria McInerney from the National Cancer Control Program. Um, so we'll just, so um, the four Sorry, of us have, sorry yes. Kevin, can I just stop you for a second? Um, yeah. Maria, your, your, your presentation is in um, presenter mode, um, oh, not- brilliant. You might be able yeah. to, just in display settings there. The notes, yeah, take the notes off. Okay. Um, just trying to see. Yeah, I think that's it. At the top it. of the screen. Um, Penny, you might be just able to help yeah, us Yeah, if you just see um, just beside show taskbar there, Maria, it says display settings. If you that's click on that right. and then swap okay. presenter view and slideshow. Oh, perfect. Great. Thanks very much. Great. Perfect. Never. So um, I suppose over the years, there has been a lot of work in skin cancer prevention, particularly by the Irish Cancer Society and other organizations, uh, including the Skin Foundation and, and, and the HSC. But I suppose it wasn't really coordinated and we didn't have kind of a national response. But thankfully, just uh, two years ago now, um, we, we had the launch of the National Skin Cancer Prevention Plan, which is kind of a, a collaborative effort of all of the, the various stakeholders to come together and, and kind of have a national response. And so with the publication of the plan, an implementation group have been set up and my, my three colleagues have been working on a particular subgroup um, for outdoor workers, which we'll tell you more about in, in a few moments. So the plan as a both has a number of key target areas, uh, young, people, young people and children obviously is, is an important one. Um, sunbed users, again, was another target area because we know how, how dangerous and how carcinogenic sunbed use is. And of course, the other area is outdoor leisure and sporting area, and we have a subgroup working in that area. But um, Barbara, Maria, and Lynn and myself have been working uh, on this particular area for outdoor workers over the last two or three years. And I suppose the, the plan of work really is to kind of identify opportunities, um, such as we have this morning with Chagas, uh, and other, other industry areas, such as the constru construction industry, um, and, and uh, other outdoor workers. Uh, and we've, we've, I suppose, developed a number of resources and supports for employers to help them kind of um, maintain this work and, and continue this work uh, into the future. Um, and I suppose we'll, you'll hear more this morning about, about that work and, and what we hope to do in the future. So over the last number of, over the last number of months, we've developed a number of support materials for employers and, and for, for outdoor workers um, including a risk assessment, you know, to, to allow employers to look at that risk uh, for, for, for skin cancer uh, and what they can do to reduce that risk. Policy template so that they can sustain the work into the future. 
uh, a workplace audit tool, questionnaires, sample case study. So all of that information is available on the HSE website. And, and if anyone wants further information on any of those things, uh, you can drop us an email at prevention at cancercontrol.ie. So this is, this is kind of an, an attempt to try and sustain the work into the future. Uh, we know that you know, there's a lot of effort to raise awareness in the short term, but we want to make sure that employers have proper measures in place to, to protect the workers. Uh, and through those policy actions, hopefully that will be achieved. So this morning we want to go through, you know, to, to really raise the awareness of skin cancer prevention. Uh, as I said earlier, this is the most preventable of all cancers. And so there's very simple measures we can take to reduce our risk. And we'll talk about that. Um, we want to provide some of the evidence in relation to skin cancer prevention for farmers. We've been looking at the international evidence, particularly in, in, in Australia and Canada, where perhaps are a little bit more advanced in the work in, of skin cancer prevention than we have. So we've learned a lot from them and we'll share some of that research with you. We want to support consistent standard messaging. You know, there's a lot of, I suppose, different messages we hear about, about the sauna here in Ireland, and maybe some people have different attitudes to the sun. Um, and we want to be very clear. And that was one of our first tasks when we came together as a group, to be very clear what our messages are so that people know exactly what they can do. And we want to show what farmers can do to prevent skin cancer. So that's our kind of aims this morning, and hopefully we'll be able to bring you through those. Okay, um, so Barbara will kind of set the scene for us um, and, and look at some of the statistics and, and skin cancer risk. Uh, Lynn will then look at some of the evidence, international evidence, and see what kind of messages, really important messages then for farmers. And then Maria will talk about kind of what our plans are for the rest of the summer uh, and, and our campaign, and maybe our links with, with MetAaron as well. And we'll take some time later on to, to look at some questions and particular answers. But I suppose before we start, we'll go to the next one, then Maria. We just want to look at some of the, maybe some of the, the, the attitudes or some of the thoughts that people might have around uh, sun here in Ireland. And and sometimes we hear these messages, and you know maybe I just want you to think about those statements, and and we'll address them as as the as the during the course of the of the session, and maybe revisit them. But do you wear sunscreen? Um, do you think you need it? Um, maybe your skin, you feel that it maybe just, it, it, it never burns, it only tans, so maybe you feel you don't need it. Do you think here in Ireland you only need to use sunscreen in hot sunny days? The UV index today is, is moderate. Do you think you need to be wearing sunscreen today? Um, so if you look out the window, would you wear it if you're going out now for, for lunch or for, for some work this afternoon? Some people are very nervous about sunscreen because they'll tell us that there's chemicals in sunscreen, sunscreen that cause cancer. And then there's so much debate now about vitamin D. Sunbathing, you know, they feel you need to get as much vitamin D as possible. So how much sunbathing do you think you actually need? So that's an important question for you and just be aware of that one. Uh, maybe some of our younger population really want to get that tan so they don't think skin cancer is a problem and it's only a problem for older people. We will look at some of the statistics around that and maybe might, that might change the attitude towards that one. And then going on a sunbed before holidays prevents sunburn and it's going to be going to be good for to get a good base tan. We hear this a lot, you know, the importance of getting a base tan. So we might look at that one. Um, is, that, is that true or false? So have a look at those for a second and then we'll revisit them in, in, uh, towards the end of the session. Okay, I'll hand you over now to Barbara, who, who will bring you through some of the, 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 who will set the scene for you in, in relation to skin cancer prevention for farmers. Okay, thanks, Barbara. Okay, thank you very much, Kevin and John, for the introduction. I'm delighted to be here today and just talk about a very important topic as we've been talking about skin cancer prevention, particularly for farmers. So I'll move on to the next slide, Maria. So key messages are, skin cancer is the most common cancer in Ireland amongst both men and women. So every one in three cancers is skin cancer. But the great news is that it is the most preventable of all cancers. And the main reason why it is preventable is that you can actually see it. It's visible on the skin. We know that the main cause of skin cancer is UV rays from the sun and from sunbeds and also Outdoor workers can be exposed to up to three times more UV compared to indoor workers. 
So that puts outdoor workers at increased risk of skin cancer and eye damage. So the next slide gives us the instance, the average numbers of melanomas and non-melanomas in Ireland between 2018 and 2020. Overall, there's over 13,300 skin cancers diagnosed in Ireland. Out of that number, non-melanoma skin cancers are the most common cancers with over 12,000 diagnosed. There's also 1,000, almost 1,200 melanomas diagnosed in Ireland every year, and that is the most deadliest form of skin cancer. Now, the take home message from this slide is that more males than females get skin cancer overall, and more males than females die from skin cancer. Now, I know the instance is set to rise, maybe double or treble within the next 20 years particularly for melanoma in men. So we really need to do something about this. And this is where prevention and early detection is so important. Okay, the next slide. So these are maps of melanoma and non-melanoma and areas of highest instance over the 23 year period from 1994 to 2016. And for melanoma, these areas for melanoma increased instance are Cork, Waterford and Wexford, the sunny southeast, and for non-melanoma is Dublin, Wicklow, Cork and Kerry. So uh, next slide. Thanks Maria. So if we look at the CSO figures from 2018, we know that there were 267 deaths in total from skin cancer and one in four of these deaths were from outdoor workers in the construction, outdoor and farming industry. So this correlates to 71 deaths in Ireland related to sun exposure at work in 2018. So the next slide, we're going to talk a little bit, bit about the different types of skin cancer. So there are two main types of skin cancer. There's non-melanoma skin cancer, which consists of basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma and there's also malignant melanoma. Next slide, thanks. So basal cell carcinoma, this is the most common skin cancer of all. Now it is rarely a threat to life. They're mainly located on the head, neck, nose and hands, but they also can occur on areas where there's little UV exposure. They usually arise in normal skin, and they appear as raised, translucent, pearly and flesh colored on the skin, as you can see. Another name for BCC or basal cell carcinoma is a rodent ulcer. Now, the main cause of BCCs are repeated episodes of sunburn and also intermittent UV exposure. So we're going to go on to the next form of non-melanoma skin cancer, and this is called squamous cell carcinoma. Now it's mainly on skin sun exposed sites like the face, the lips, the ears, the hands, the forearms and the lower legs. It occurs in the older population, generally above 50 years, although 20% can occur in people lower than under 50 years of age. It appears as ulcers that don't heal. It can be flat, scaly and red in appearance. It can, slow, it can grow slowly over a number of months or years, or it can grow very quickly. And the main cause of this type of skin cancer is cumulative UV exposure. And this type of cancer affects lots of outdoor workers, particularly farmers and golfers. Now we're going on to the next form of skin cancer, which is melanoma skin cancer. As I said earlier, this is the deadliest form of skin cancer. And the main reason for this is it can be very fast growing. And once it grows fast, it can penetrate into the skin and spread throughout the body. So what we're looking for in terms of melanoma, it can present as a new or changing mole. There are changes in size, color and shape. Molds that look red or inflamed are bleeding, crusting or oozing, and they can start to feel different. And as we can see from the pictures on the right, they're very colored in terms of appearance. 50% of melanomas can arise on, in an existing mole. And also melanoma can affect younger people more significantly. 
between the ages of 15 and 44. So it's very important to get to know your skin really well and recognize changes in moles on your body. Now, in terms of the most common areas for melanoma in women, it's the legs and in men, it's the back. So the next slide shows us how we can actually look out for the sign for melanoma. This is called the ABCDE signs. So the first thing is to look out for asymmetry. This is where one side of the, of the, the mole is not the same as the other. And as we can see from the diagram, the normal mole is very symmetrical, whereas the melanoma is asymmetrical. Borders is when the edges of the melanoma are very uneven and jagged, as we can see in the picture. C stands for color. Melanomas can have a variety of colors, up to four different colors they can be. The diameter. If the mole is increasing in size, so it's greater than six millimeters, and that's generally like the top of a pencil, you need to see about it. And the last thing is evolving. This is where a mole is changing and it needs to be investigated. So basically, these are the main signs to look out for for melanoma. And you really need to get to know your skin and check it at least once a month for, for different signs for skin cancer. The next slide. Now, UV rays are the main cause of skin cancer. And there's different types of UV rays. So there's UVA, UVB, and UVC. UVC is mainly blocked out by the ozone layer, so it doesn't reach the earth. But UVA and UVB are the main rays that cause skin cancer. As we can see from the diagram on the left of a skin, piece of skin, UVA has a longer wavelength and goes deeper into the skin. And UVA is associated with aging. Now, UVB is a shorter wavelength and it reaches the top of the skin. It doesn't go as deep in. And this is associated more with burning. So we can see from the diagram on the right about the clouds, UVA goes through clouds and UVB can be blocked by cloud, depending on the type of cloud and how thick the cloud is. Also, UVA can go through glass and the main thing about UV is that it causes DNA damage to the skin and the eyes. So this can lead to skin cancer and damage, eye damage. So the next slide is the Fitz Fitzpatrick skin type. So this is a scale that goes from one to six and it classifies skin type based on the natural color of your skin and also how your skin reacts to UV. So basically skin type one and two are the fairest skin type. They burn easily and tan minimally. 70% of the Irish population are this skin type. So it puts us at increased risk of skin cancer. And as you move up in type, it gets darker, skin color gets darker. So when you get to skin type six, that's the darkest of skin, it never burns and deeply tans. Although there still is a risk of skin cancer, even with darker skin. So the UV index, this is a scale that goes from one to one to 11 plus and measures the intensity of UV rays as it hits the Earth's surface. We know that UV index of three and above, you need to protect your skin and eyes when it reaches this level. And as you can see from the diagram, the UV between April to September is generally above three. So people need to take precautions and protect their skin and eyes, even on cloudy days. The next diagram, this shows us the UV index, and this is on the MetAaron website, and it shows us the risk. So one to two is low risk, where little protection is required, unless you're near surfaces like snow and water. Generally, this is between October to March in Ireland. So very little protection is required, although you can wear sunscreen all year round to protect you from UVA. Um, when you get to moderate, risk, this is generally between April to September in Ireland, uh, you need to use protection. So we promote the slip, slop, slap, seek shade and slide on sunglasses. And then you get to very high levels when you get to eight up to 11 plus. And generally in Ireland, it doesn't really reach uh, more than, than eight as such. Next slide. Okay, these are pictures of how UV can affect outdoor workers. And here we have a lorry driver and we see that on the left hand side of uh, the person's face there is severe aging. This is 
as a result of UV damage sitting in a cab and being exposed to UV. The next slide. So this shows us twins who have two different occupations. On the left, you have the office worker who's indoors. And on the right, you have the horticultural worker who has severe pigmentation caused by UV damage and sun exposure. So these are just how UV can affect us. Now, this is the key message that we're promoting uh, today, and it is the best way to protect your skin from UV. So it's following the five S's where you can slip on clothing. So you need to cover as much skin as possible, wearing long sleeves, if possible, collared t-shirts and clothes made from close woven material that doesn't allow sunlight to go through is very important. We encourage people to slap on sunscreen, SPF or sun protection factor 30 plus for adults and 50 plus for children with high UVA protection factor. Slap on a wide brimmed hat, which is important to protect the face, the ears and the neck and seek shade, sit under trees to avoid direct sunlight. That's incredibly important if there are trees around or if not, seek shade indoors if it's, it's too hot. Slide on sunglasses, wrap around are the best to protect your eyes and from UV damage. So in terms of sunscreen use, Sunscreen should be used along with the other measures. It's so important to really cover the skin as much as possible, wear the hat, wear the sunglasses, and then the sunscreen on areas that aren't exposed, or that are exposed to UV is important to put on the sunscreen. Now, SPF is called sun protection factor, and that protects you against the UVB rays. So that should be 30 plus for adults or 50 plus and 50 plus for children. Now the UVA is, when a sunscreen is broad spectrum, it protects against UVA, UVB, and sometimes UVC, although not a lot of UVC gets through. But UVA is the star factor on, the stars on the sunscreen. So that can be either four star or five star, or there can be just a symbol saying UVA. So that's important to protect against aging. So it's very important to protect your skin using your sunscreen as well as all the other measures. Next slide. So finally, really very important uh, point to, to make is early detection and to check your skin, get to know what your skin looks like. Look out for a new or changing mole, a new growth or sore that doesn't heal, a spot or sore that continues to itch, hurt, ooze, scab, or bleed, a change in a mole or a skin lesion, a change in sensation or how something feels, or if you've got skin ulcers that are not explained by other causes that don't heal, you need to go and see your GP who can refer you if needed into the hospital. So finally, just want to bring your attention to some really good international programs that have produced a lot of resources uh, on for outdoor workers uh, in Australia called the SunSmart program, as you would, you would know about. And also Sun Safety at Work Canada have brilliant resources uh, that we have used and adapted in our, for our um, Healthy Ireland Sun Smart resources. And I would strongly encourage you to have a look at the website. And finally, these are the leaflets that the Irish Cancer Society have on their website. And also there's the Cancer Control website as well. Thank you very much. Thanks, Barbara. I'll hand you over now to, to Lynn, who's going to look at some of the what, kind of research from around the world on, on what works um, in relation to skin cancer prevention for farmers. Lynn? Thanks, Kevin. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody, uh, and um, you're very welcome to today's webinar. We're delighted to get this opportunity to present to you and, and to look at the work that we've been doing on outdoor workers over the past couple of years. Um, I would have looked at multiple, um, I suppose, countries and multiple research papers looking at uh, preparing for today's webinar. But I really want to present three to you this morning, along with the messaging that was consistent across all the research. And we've picked out different types of pieces to show you how they measure UV and what farmers think about uh, sun uh, skin cancer prevention. Um, we'll skip on there, Maria, to the first one. So this was a study and they looked at in Australia how farmers were responding to the slip, slop, slap um, campaign. 
And I suppose some of the, the facts I found interesting in that we know that by the nature of farms that they're small, independent, geographically spread, and mostly are family run businesses. So they don't fit into the workplace um, nature of skin cancer prevention. Um, we know that farmers are at least three times exposed to UV compared to indoor workers. But this study actually suggests that that could be much higher, potentially up to six to eight times higher compared to indoor workers. Um, and the next slide there, please, Maria. Um, some of the, the things that they found was that sunscreen use wasn't um, as used as much in farmers as the other protective measures, such as hats, long sleeves and sunglasses. And I suppose they were wondering, you know, why is that? And some of the things that they said was that farmers are often out for long periods. So when you ask farmers to use um, shade or avoid the sun between 10 and three, that sometimes that's just not possible given the nature of their work in that they may be away from um, the farm for, for many, many hours at a time. So they may not have their sunscreen with them. They may not have planned to bring it with them. And actually they relied on other measures um, instead. I suppose interesting, they found that health messages for farmers will work better when it advises farmers what they can do rather than what they should not do. And we see this happening now during the COVID um, pandemic in that we are told that actually we all respond better to messages when we're told what we can do rather than disempowering us and told us what we can't do. And I think that's really important when we look at the messaging that we want to have for farmers. We want them to be empowered. We want them to take control of their own skin cancer prevention and really plan out their day and be ready um, and have everything, um, I suppose, in line with the messages that we're giving them about being prepared. The campaign in Australia tells us that it's really important to reinforce messages for farmers and that at every opportunity we should repeat all of these messages and that we should reinforce them as much as we can. So things like not only us saying them, but Chaga saying them and any other um, organizations or any other points of contact like your pharmacist, if you're buying your sunscreen, but all opportunities are used to repeat and reinforce these messages work best for the farming community. If we look at the next study then, this was a really interesting study done in Austria where they actually put UV monitors on the foreheads of 12 farmers from April to October. And every day they recorded the UV exposure of these 12 farmers. So really interesting in-depth study looking at their um, ongoing exposure over quite a long period. So when we look at when our farmers getting most of their UV exposure, it's when they're standing upright or walking in an open field, as we would expect. It's when they're driving a tractor without housing. And this can be on both clear days and with broken cloud days. And this is very often sometimes where we might get caught out, where we look out and think, oh, it's a bit cloudy today. I'm unlikely to get UV exposure and therefore we're not prepared for the day ahead. So I think that's a really good take home message to realize that even through clouds, we need to be prepared, we need to be ready and we need to be UV protected. What was interesting in the diaries that the farmers kept on this study was that when they take a break, which was predominantly between 11 and 12 um, every day, we see that their UV exposure goes to zero. And what's interesting about that is that that hour show, tells us that they're getting zero exposure but when we look at their day that's actually decreasing their UV exposure by 15 percent so that one hour by taking a break during that one hour using shade or going inside for that one hour reduced their UV exposure by 15 percent and that was consistent among most of the farmers that seems to be where they took their break highest UV exposure for, for these farmers was between two and four in the afternoon when they were again doing um, long periods of work um, in fields or with tractors. Um, interesting in this study, they said that um, while farmers are lifelong on the farm, that their exposure therefore can be cumulative. And what Barbara spoke to in relation to what we know about non-melanomas, it is about your cumulative exposure to UV. So the longer that you're farming and the longer that you're in outdoor work, you're actually building up your cumulative UV exposure. So interesting, that's what they found also. If we skip on then to the last study. So this was a study, again, um, 
they looked at 360 farmers and they asked them about their individual and um, their skin skin cancer protection kind of routine and what they felt worked and didn't work. Um, really interesting, again, sunscreen use low for farmers, but hat use high. And, and again, the use of long sleeve uh, clothing and uh, sunglasses seemed pretty good as well. What was interesting about this study was that um, when asked why sunscreen use was, was particularly low, the farmers said that they often um, are away from uh, water and the ability to wash their hands after they applied sunscreen. So they just basically didn't take it with them. And I think that's really interesting in us looking at a message about how do you plan your day and the fact that you may be away from a water source and therefore you may need an alternative method to wash your hands after you apply sunscreen. So again, we're looking at that messaging around encouraging farmers um, to wear their long sleeve tops or sunglasses and take advantage of, of shade whenever possible. Um, and again, looking at reasons for why sunscreen use may be low and how do we come around and look at that a little bit differently. So looking at those three studies and other studies, we put together a packaging of messaging um, that hopefully that you can buy into and you can share with your family and you can give us feedback about whether these messages actually work for you in the profession of farming. So you would have heard this said time and time again, don't just wait for hot and sunny days to use sun protection. You have to get into the habit that it is every day. So either you go for um, all year round or you go from April to September and you are using sunscreen every morning before you go out and you are making your plan for what way you're going to protect your skin, given the nature of the work you have to do that day. So don't be fooled by the cool, cloudy days because you may get UV through um, those clouds. And even if it feels a bit cool, even, you know, you may get that UV index rising to above three. So we know today the UV index, as Kevin had said, is moderate. So we know it's between three and five. And for the next few days, we know it's between three and five. So maybe use these next few days to practice your skin cancer prevention plan and have yourselves prepared for how you will protect yourself. We know that overexposure to UV can cause sunburn, skin and eye damage and skin cancer. And I think sometimes we forget a little bit about the eye damage and it's important to remember that. We know that the, this, the sun exposure can cause skin cancers in the eye, but it can also cause cataracts and, and different eye damage. So we want um, to reduce that overexposure to UV in general. So the really big message is from April to September, the UV can be three and above every day in Ireland. So you need to make a plan that you're taking action and protecting your skin every day. Um, we know that the effects of UV exposure, as Barbara had shown you in the Fitzpatrick scale, are not the same for everyone. So if you are very light skinned with that pale skin and um, the freckles or the light hair, you will burn quick and you need to be really prepared and not get caught out. OK, so so look at your skin, plot where you are on the Fitzpatrick scale and then look at how much protection you need to build in but you really do need to take some sort of protection every day, okay? If we skip on, um, so this is about you creating a daily routine. So every day you need to do this, okay? So be aware that UV is strongest between 11 and three. We do see from the research that they, this may not suit farmers, but please build this into your plan and your schedule of work every day. So if you do know you're gonna be out all day, please have your plan ready. So have all your things with you. And um, if you can at all schedule outdoor work early in the morning or late afternoon, where we do know that UV is a little bit lower, but if you can't just be ready to deal with the possible high UV going over three. Um, trees and portable shade are a really good use of um, a protective measure. So you can use trees during your lunch or if you're having a break, or if not, a portable shade will help you get that break from that intense UV if you're out all day. And um, just something to be aware of that if you're working around reflective surfaces, that sunlight does reflect off surfaces like snow, sand, concrete and water, and you may be getting increased exposure without even really knowing it. So again, maybe plan your work with these surfaces at alternative times of the day or alternative times of the year when UV is lower. 
So this is about creating a daily routine, okay? So please think about that, how you might go about doing that for yourself. So have your hat ready, have your sunscreen and have your clothing ready and have them to go with you. Um, have your sunglasses ready and accessible to you. Have your sunscreen, which we've told you needs to be SPF 30 for adults. You put it on in the morning before you go out. You're reapplying every two hours and possibly have an access to a water source or maybe some wet wipes to wash your hands if that is important for you and you are going to be away um, maybe from home or out all day um, so that you can clean your hands and, and reapply again, okay? So think about what elements need to go into your daily routine. The, so the actions that you can take. So if you are a person and you have a lot of molds, okay? So if you do feel that your whole body, you know, you're covered in possibly 50 or more molds, we would encourage you to have them checked annually by a dermatologist because that's quite a lot for you to keep on top of about checking. Is this moving? Is this growing? Is this changing? So please think about that and maybe check in with a dermatologist annually. As Barbara has said to you, please check your skin regularly for changes. If you see something that is new on your skin and it wasn't there before and you're wondering what it is, please get it checked out. If there's something unusual on an existing mole or a new unusual growth, and it is persisting. So this kind of notion of a sore that is not healing, please consult your GP. Okay, that's something that we definitely want to encourage you to help seek on and get follow up on. So non-melanoma skin cancer often develops around the areas exposed to the sun. So again, looking at the face, the ears, the hands, the shoulders, the upper chest and the back. So please be vigilant to these areas if they are exposed or please cover these areas um, in your daily routine. Um, for the melanomas then, like as Barbara had said, they can appear anywhere on your body, but mostly um, on the legs um, and on the back. And just please bear in mind that sometimes they can be in the nail bed and on the sole of the foot um, or in the mouth. Again, anything unusual, new or persisting for you, please check with your GP. And finally, please become um, familiar with the UV index. It's on the MetAaron website. We would encourage you to check it once or twice a week so you know for the next two days, for the next three days, I know that the UV index is moderate, I know I need to do my daily plan, my daily routine and have things ready and accessible if I'm going to be out on the farm for long periods of time. Do a little risk assessment ongoing and periodically and looking at your work. Um, one of the things that I found really interesting in the research about farmers and exposure to UV is that potentially you are one of the groups that are outdoors the most out of our outdoor workers. So you are, are potentially outdoors six out of seven days which is a little bit unique to, to your own industry in that you are, you seem to have extra exposure. Um, so again, just look at your work. How many days are you outside? How many months are you outside for? Is it all year round? Is, are they all days? So you really are getting that cumulative exposure. Be ready with your prevention action. So we're really asking you to call to action today. Please be ready. Please make a plan, make your daily routine and really try and get on top of the things that you think you can do to prevent your UV exposure. Please avoid burning or tanning because we do know that that is UV damage and DNA damage to the skin. When you see that redness or when you see that darkening of your skin, you know that you're now getting UV um, onto the skin and you need to stop that and you need um, to protect your skin. Um, please take these messages home to your family. I suppose there's a message for everybody today. If you have children, you need to be using SPF 50 on them. You need to be doing all the things we're talking about. Long sleeve UPF clothing for them, sunglasses, shade, limit their outdoor activity between 11 and 3. But, you know, we do want you to balance that with outdoor play and outdoor family time. So it is about being ready and it is about being prepared. We know from studies in Australia that people, when we ask them why they get burned, they tell us that because they weren't prepared. They went out, they weren't prepared, and they got caught. So the message is really be prepared. Okay, in Ireland, I know and understand that sometimes you look out and you think, today is never going to be a hot day. But we do get the four seasons in one day. So it's all about that preparation and being ready um, and knowing the steps to take. 
So it's about empowering yourself. It's about taking this control and about making good decisions that can help really reduce your UV exposure and protect you and your family um, from skin cancer. So I hope you found that interesting. I'm going to hand back over to Kevin and I, we'd be happy to take questions at the end. Great. Thank you very much indeed, Lynn. That was excellent and really good, important information there for, for people. Uh, I think what's really important for me, I think, is, is that we really want to change the culture around uh, the sun here in Ireland, you know, and I think that there's good advice there, but most importantly, that we can lead by example, you know, that we, if we wear the hat and we don't take off the t-shirt and we wear the sunglasses, we have the sunscreen available, it might encourage others around us, you know, other farmers or whatever to, to do the same. Um, so it's about changing that culture. But um, yeah, some really good, um, important points there. So I suppose the, the season has really got underway, the, our, our so-called so summer season, whether it lasts a week or two days, who knows. But um, Maria has been working with the around kind of planning the campaign for the summertime, and she's been working with Met Erin um, to kind of get her get her all our, our things lined up for our messages, and hopefully you'll be able to support our campaign. But Maria, do you want to tell us then about, about the plans for the summer? Yeah, sure. So uh, unfortunately, my screen seems to have, fro have frozen, so I can't seem to go on to the next slide. So I might just talk to you just yeah. here while I'm trying to share the screen again. Okay. Um, so I suppose just to let you know, the um, the campaign is running um, this year. So it's running from um, April to September. Um, and oh, it's just kicked off, I suppose, as, um, the campaign early April. So uh, through social media channels. Um, we're, we're running the campaign and um, I suppose we're ramping it up throughout the month. So previous years um, with the campaign, we have looked at uh, doing um, social media, um, but this year we're also doing some radio and some and some long lead as well. So that will be ramping up from from June. Um, so I suppose just give you some context with the with the campaign. So um, a lot of the messaging is population wide. So I suppose we're encouraging everyone across the country to be sun smart and and to be aware of uh, skin cancer cancer risk um, but there are some high risk populations within that um, so I suppose that would include those who pursue outdoor leisure activities so those who would participate in sport outdoors so whether it's golf or tennis or any kind of outdoor activities where you're outside quite regularly um, are also um, children and young people so we do know from research that if children um, get sunburned from an early age they're more um, at risk of get, of developing skin cancer later in life um, sunbed users as well and and then I suppose today we're here to talk to you about outdoor workers. Um, so, and that would include farmers. So I suppose as part of the campaign, um, the HSE National Cancer Control Programme are working in partnership with Healthy Ireland uh, to raise awareness of ways you can protect your skin. And I know Barbara and Lynn and Kevin have all mentioned different ways that you can, um, I suppose, be sun smart every day. So uh, we have done a lot of work with Met Erin as well. Um, so we're working with them to try and encourage people to go on to Met Air and to look at the UV index. As we said, the UV index over the next few days is going to be moderate. So I suppose just encouraging people to look at that and to be prepared and, and to know what to do in relation um, to this, so the warm weather. Um, then, as I said, we, we with the campaign, we do have um, some resources. We have videos, we have social media assets, um, which we're putting together at the moment. Um, and I suppose we're encouraging as many people as possible to share the, the information on social media channels or um, communicating with other people even if you're just talking to other people and, and to talk a little bit more about it so if you are interested in finding out more about the the sun smart campaign or you want to know maybe potentially how you can get involved um, our email address is just put on the screen there so it's prevention at cancercontrol.ie um, and I suppose there are a number of different ways that the people can get involved. Um, I suppose talking to as many people as possible and I suppose yourself being sun smart is really important for us. Um, if you can go to the next slide. Thanks, Kevin. Um, so as I said, so sharing on your platform. Um, also, I know for if you do work with a number of people, say on the farm, I suppose being positive role models. So encouraging um, other people who you work with to, to be sun smart. So you yourself putting on the sun cream, covering the skin, um, trying to see what the UV index is. So again, being prepared. Um, we have, as I said, a number of resources available. Um, in, including a risk assessment, which you can uh, contact us. We're happy to, to share that information with people. Um, I know people sometimes can put a UV index up at the beginning of the morning, so they know what it is throughout the day. So people coming on, coming in to, to work can see what it is and they know and, and can be prepared. 
Um, uh, next slide, please. So I suppose as part of the, the campaign, we do have some key messages specifically for outdoor workers. Um, so outdoor workers can be exposed to two to three times more UV than indoor workers. So that puts them at increased risk. And I suppose, as Lynn said, farmers are supposed to are even more at risk because you're outdoors more often than, say, other outdoor workers. So I suppose being prepared and, and knowing what to do. Um, and as we said earlier, we have the, the SunSmart code, um, which we're encouraging everyone to do. So slip on clothing that covers your skin, slop on sun cream. So uh, 30 plus um, for adults, 50 plus for, for kids. Um, and I suppose reapplying it regularly is, is really important as well. So you don't just put it on once in the day, it's putting it, regularly throughout the, putting it on regularly throughout the day, um, slapping on a wide brim sun hat, seeking shade, especially between the hours of 11 and three and slapping on wide brimmed or a wraparound sunglasses glasses as well so they're all key messages that we're trying to push out there as part of the campaign and I suppose letting as many people know as possible um, about the campaign um, so uh, I know we had discussed earlier about the um, the myths so I'll hand you back over to Kevin on that but if you have any questions please feel free to contact us or even put any comments or questions in the question box below thanks Thank you very much, Marie, and we look forward to, to the campaign this year again. It's, it's brilliant to have met Erin involved this year again, uh, and, I, and I think they, they've really improved the, the information they have available on their website, so we look forward to promoting that. So here's the test now and see how, how well you've been listening. Um, if we were with you in person, we'd be able to offer you a prize or whatever, but um, I don't know what you're, how you feel about some of these questions now, but um, if you felt that you didn't need sunscreen and that your skin never burns and only tans, um, have, has your attitude to that changed? Um, because we now know that three in every four people in Ireland have skin types of one and two, and we saw the different types of skin that, that Barbara presented there, you know, and, but most of them um, actually burn quite easily, and 75% and of the Irish population have a fair skin type, so most of us here in Ireland burn quite easily. So if you're getting repeated sunburns, um, you, your risk of, of skin cancer certainly increase. And, and, and as Barbara said, even people who have quite dark skin, black or brown skin, you, you, you can still receive enough UV damage to increase your risk of skin cancer. Uh, and we hear this very often, you know, it's sure it's, it's cloudy, it's a bit cold today, and we don't need sunscreen, you only need it on hot sunny days. But again, that's another myth. Uh, and as, as Lynn pointed out, you know, about you know, most, most days between April and September, almost 90%, 95% of those days has, has UV levels high enough to cause damage. Um, at the Irish Cancer Society, we actually monitored that, that across a period of time throughout the summer. And, and we found that 95% that of the days between April and October, uh, the UV levels were high enough to cause damage. Then we often get some resistance around sunscreen people you know say well there's chemicals in sunscreen that causes cancer and I suppose this is a myth we really want to nail we've often been asked this question and um, we know that there's been a lot of studies on it um, uh, you know um, basically um, there, there is no chem the, the chemicals are not harmful to, to, to people and um, there's been a lot of studies on this the research on, on chemicals uh, in sunscreen does not show that they cause cancer and none of these chemicals have been classified as cancer causing so it's really important to emphasize that there have been a few small studies um, that says that some of the preservatives in 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 sunscreen can act like estrogen in the body which can speed up some of the growth of breast cancer tumors but that's a very very small studies and it's not not enough to to suggest that chemicals cause can cancer, the chemicals in sunscreen cause cancer, so it's, it's not true. So it shouldn't be a reason not to wear sunscreen. Uh, the, the whole debate around vitamin D, and particularly in the context of COVID-19 and the importance of getting vitamin D, um, and you know, obviously sun exposure is the best natural source of vitamin D. However, you can also get vitamin D from your diet and by taking supplements. Um, and when, when UV radiation touches the skin, vitamin D, of course, is made. However, a number of things affect this process, including your age, your skin type, and where you are in the world and the time of the year. Uh, during the summer months in Ireland, spending a few minutes in the sun is the best way for your body to produce vitamin D, but it's unlikely that your skin will make vitamin D in the winter months, but the body can store enough to last at least 30 to 60 days. But the World Health Organization, this is really important advice, the World Health Organization advises us to get 
five to 15 minutes of casual sun exposure in your hands, face and arms two or three times a week during the summer month. In this way, sun exposure, uh, as you go about your daily life, you know, it really makes a difference. So, but you do not need to sunbathe uh, for long periods of time to build up your vitamin D levels. You can get it in, obviously in, in, in food and you can get, can get it um, through supplements. And you know, we have often heard that, that a lot of the population are, are, have low levels of vitamin D and we do need to get it, but we do not need to let our skin redden or burn to get vitamin D. And we need to be very careful that, 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 that we don't get, get sunburn. Skin cancer is only a problem for older people. Well, unfortunately, we're seeing larger numbers of younger people getting skin cancer. Um, and of course, if you're getting skin cancer at a young age, you know, that, that's, gonna, that's gonna be really problematic as, as time goes on. Um, we know that melanoma patients ha have a younger profile uh, with almost a third of all female patients and a fifth of males diagnosed before the age of 50. The average age for a diagnosis of melanoma is about 64 and it's a bit later than for the basal cell and the squamous cell carcinomas but it's a, it's a growing problem for younger people. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's certainly not just um, for older people. This whole issue of sunbeds, sunbeds are carcinogenic themselves. Thankfully, we have a ban for the under 18s here in Ireland. Um, and you know, there's, there's no such thing as a safe tan. Tan skin is damaged skin. Um, so getting sunbed before holidays is certainly not not what we recommend whatsoever. In fact, if you use a sunbed before the age of 35, your increased risk of, 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 of melanoma skin cancer increases by about 75%. Um, so it's not safe to get, to get a, a tan from a sunbed or to use a sunbed at all. In fact, it suggests that the UV rays from a sunbed can be 15 times higher uh, than the midday Mediterranean sun because of your risk of melanoma is, is, is much greater than. So that's the quiz over. Hopefully you got 100% in that, um, but it's just our way of kind of summarizing the, the key messages. Um, I suppose at this point, maybe uh, we, we will uh, take a few questions and try and address some of the questions. Um, has somebody been monitoring the questions or if there's anybody want to make a comment on any of those? Any of the panel want to kind of summarize anything that I've missed out on or clarify any of those points? Yeah, yeah. Um, Kevin, do you do you want to um, do you want to go down through the Q and A maybe, and you can okay. So okay, where are we at? Yeah. Um, there was a question there. Um, why men are more prone than women? I think Barbara made the point about you know, maybe more men were actually dying from skin cancer, while more women were actually being diagnosed with skin cancer. And what's that about, do you think? Yeah. Barbara, yeah. Well, I think men, because men probably go, don't go to the doctor soon enough, you know, they don't get it treated soon enough. So they're, you know, they, they're going to have a higher um, risk of dying. Um, I suppose in terms of more men getting skin cancer, you know, uh, I suppose there's a lot of outdoor workers. So, you know, a lot of outdoor workers are getting skin cancer. So that's, there's an awful lot of males in, in outdoor workers, but there's also females. But um, so, and it's also behavior, you know, women have been found in studies to protect their skin uh, more than men. So this is why we want to increase awareness, you know. For I think, Barbara, very often, you know, for it comes to skin cancer, if it's not causing me any pain, it might not look that good, but it's not causing me any pain. It's not stopping me from going to work. I'm sure it's, it's no big deal, but I think maybe women would be a little more conscious of, of what's on their skin. And so men probably leave, the, leave the, the problem to go for a wee while longer than they should, of course. Yeah. Um, there's a question there about, um, uh, you know, for, for, for school children, school going children outside for lunch break, do they need sunscreen leaving home in the morning? So again, I think, you know, that's, it's, it's very important that, that children have, have sunscreen if they're outdoors for that lunch break. Uh, schools have different policies on it. Some schools would advise children to bring it along because they, they can't apply it to children, younger children themselves. So, but we would be encouraging certainly schools to have policies on 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 sun protection. Certainly, yeah, yeah. Um, Irish need for vitamin D and keep out of sun from messy. So this whole vitamin D has been very topical in the media recently. The importance of get vitamin D, but just to emphasize you you don't need to get your skin burnt or reddened 
to get enough vitamin D uh, and you need to be very careful about that one. But certainly you need vitamin D, but, um, and you can get it from diet and from, from, from um, vitamins, supplements, yeah? But another thing in terms of making vitamin D, the fairer the skin, the quicker you make vitamin D. That's another thing. Uh, so, and then the darker the skin, your natural skin color, uh, you need more time to make vitamin D. So that's the difference in terms of vitamin D production, depending on skin color. And then there's a question there, Barbara, about skin lesions. Uh, what percentage are basal cell? What percentage are squamous? And what percentage of melanoma? Uh, I know we have, of the 13,000 skin cancers, about 1,000 of them are melanoma, the more serious one. But the basal and the squamous, I think the basal is more common, isn't it? It's yeah, so basal cell carcinoma is the commonest of all skin cancers. And it's normally in a ratio of four to one to squamous cell carcinoma. So four to one. So we have about 12,000 non-melanoma skin cancers. So a four to one ratio. So um, to work out the maths, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. about 10,000 10, uh, basal cells to 2,000 squamous cells. There's a question there about the SPF. Uh, what is recommended star rating for SPF for adults? Well, five star is probably the best. Um, and, mo and most good sunscreens will be five stars. Yeah. Although there are four stars as well. Um, okay. Um, I noticed, that, so there was a question there about um, UV rays causing melanoma. Which, which UV rays cause melanoma? Um, it's a good question. Um, it's actually both, <laughs> both. UVA and UVB even though UVA is more associated with aging because it goes deeper into the skin it's also associated with skin cancer because it causes DNA damage so it's and the thing about melanoma is it's intermittent UV exposure so it's the episodes of sunburn are very much related to melanoma the deadliest form of skin cancer is factor 30 okay at all times? Um, factor, yeah, factor 30 is very good. Uh, it, if it's applied correctly, it will protect you against 93% of UV compared to factor 50, which protects you against 96% of UV. That's only if it's applied you know, in the right amount, which you need quite a bit to get those high levels of protection from sunscreen. Kind of getting any other let me see um, um there's one there kevin about is sunscreen out of date is it oh, yeah, still good, good to use i mean that's a great question that comes up time and time again and i think it's in relation to the efficacy of the sunscreen will have deteriorated over time so chances are if it's out of date it, um, it's probably not as efficacious as you know you could still use it but you may not be getting the protection you think you're getting because it has actually deteriorated over time, particularly if you use it and you throw it in, in, in a car and then the car has a sun coming in, it will have deteriorated. So you're going to try and probably get one every um, you know, year or something. And there was a question a little while ago, Kevin, about the types of sunscreen. And this comes up a lot about the cheap ones versus yeah. you know, the more expensive ones. And we just know once they have the star rating and they have the, UV, the, the SPF, it doesn't really matter. So, you know, you could be thinking you're spending a lot more money for better quality, but actually it's the same. And the question there about sun creams lasting for 10 hours, is it true? You know, sometimes you see creams advertised, they last all day. Um, we don't recommend those type of creams because we feel that, you know, th there's a lot of factors at play. Like if you're in and out of water, um, it's, or, or you wipe, wipe the cream off, I think, it's something you, you cannot really guarantee that it's going to last for 10 hours. So we, we think that you should be you should be constantly repeating sun cream, putting on sun cream quite often, putting it on before you go out. I think a lot of the challenge is that sun, uh, sun creams are not used properly and that not enough of it is used. Um, so it's not a 100 percent guarantee to protect yourself from from getting sunburned. So uh, well, it's very important, uh, but it's it, I don't think we should rely totally on it. And I don't think sun creams could last longer than, you know, 10 hours. I think that's a big ask. 
Um, any other, let me see, any other questions? Presenters? Yeah, there's, there's just one. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, yeah, I mean, Kevin, just um, we'll say uh, a self-employed person, you know, <clears throat> people will kind of, I suppose, spend more time if you have employees on the farm, making sure that they have the right, you know, protection when they're going out, you know, a self-employed person that's, you know, that responsibility there for themselves that they need to protect themselves for themselves and their family. Anybody want to take that one, comment on that one there? Um. So John, John McNamara here, uh, no, I, I actually asked that question, you know, but I think there is a challenge <coughs> that, you know, people take a risk, they, they won't risk the health and safety of other people, but they will take a risk themselves. So I think it's a bit more challenging to, uh, to, to, to deal with self-employed people. Now, compliments, I thought the pictures that were, were shown earlier, you know, about uh, Barbara showed them about the various lesions. I think, you know, that high vis visual kind of type of presentation, I think is really important, you know. And uh, just to mention, thanks, uh, you know, we have an article in our uh, Today's Farm magazine, which has gone to print, and I see one of those very strong and very clear pictures in it. So I think, you know, you need to really get it into people's heads that the dangers are to, to them, you know. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. And just a question. Sorry, Kevin, you work away. Yeah, I just see we had a dermatologist on there, Geraldine from Malin, um, I think it was, and she made a point there about the UVB uh, sun creams, you know, it's causing skin, sun, uh, skin cancer because people assume if you put on UVB sun cream and you spend longer outside, um, sun without burning, but broad spectrum, she's recommending the use of broad spectrum sunscreen, you know, the, the UVB and the UVA. So I think that's really important when you're buying sun cream to make sure it's protecting you from UVB and UVA. UVA. Uh, so that's really important. Um, the, there was a question there, Barbara, I know you've answered this before, about the glass behind UV, UV rays coming through glass. So if farmers are spending long time in, in the tractor behind the glass, um, so is, is clothing and sunscreen recommended? Can be difficult to put screens, screen windows due to visibility. So what's your what have you commented about glass and around tractors, Barbara? Well, I suppose you can get film, a uh, film to yeah. put on glass to protect get you know, to to make sure UV doesn't get through the glass. I mean, that can be done. Um, I think it depends on the glass as well. Sometimes there is some sort of, there's a very low level of UV protection depending on the type of glass there is, you know. So there's lots of different variables when it comes to glass and UV getting through, but we do know UVA does get through and it's, it's got to do with the wavelength of the UV. So again, there's lots of factors. There's a question there, Barbara, about how enough, how enough, enough sunscreen, you know, how do you know when you have enough sunscreen applied? Okay. But <laughs> that's a good question. Um, I think for a full body application, it's suggested around 35 mils. So that would be about, um, there's four mils in a teaspoon. So we're talking about eight, eight teaspoons around, approximately for the whole body. So um, you need a lot of cream if you really want to cover your skin. That's, that's yeah, yeah. the and message. Also, yeah, no. People do tend to be quite liberal. They, they need to put a lot of it on, put it on often, yeah. And there's also another thing in terms of sunscreen. It's the type of sunscreen. So there's cream sunscreen, there's spray sunscreen. There's so many different variables when it comes to sunscreen. So it is a bit of a minefield. But I do know that uh, the dermatologist um, the other day, uh, Blaheen, uh, suggested cream was, was actually a, a good, a, a better option in terms of for sunscreen rather than the spray and, and other applications of sunscreen. Very good. Um, I don't know if I've missed any questions there, folks. There was a question about um, photo apps uh, that I can help me ID possible cancer to talk to the GP. So I suppose it's about taking photographs of, 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 of moles and that kind of thing. I, I think that's the way it's going to go. Um, telemedicine where people will be able to take pictures and send them to their GP and get advice. You know, why not? Yeah, 
I think absolutely it's about monitoring over time and that, you know, yeah. Um, I suppose there's a question about people sometimes don't like sunscreen because it's, it's, it's too sticky. And is there any products that aren't sticky on the skin? Um, we, we don't, I suppose we don't particularly pick, recommend any particular type of sunscreen, but, um, you know, um, I suppose, you know, it's important to, to, to use as many protective measures as possible, in, including sunscreen, but yeah. Um, I, I see Dr. Blonet Moriarty on the call there. I'm delighted you're able to make because I know you're a very busy clinic there, and we're trying to struggle through some of these questions around sunscreens. But you're the you're the expert. You might be able to, to point us in the right direction. I'm sure we hopefully. Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were wondering about the types of sunscreens to wear. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of debate about this. So um, traditionally, we all just got sunscreens and of course they were the, the traditional thing was that they had all of these factors 2 5 12 17 all of the factors and so now we know that um from the, the and those numbers all refer to the spf and so which is the uvb protection and so now they're divided into tanning oils which is 15 or less which of course many of us would have considered sun protection not so long ago and um, 15 to 30 which are low risk and then really once you get what you want is above 30 or really to my mind above 50 and that's the uv B protection. And then the other thing that you want to think about, particularly for your cohort, because lots of people who are not outdoors for long periods of time, it's the UVB, so the rays which penetrate quickly, burn you quickly, and you notice. They're the ones that people notice. But UVA rays, they're much longer. They take a lot longer to get into your skin. So it might take you three, four hours for the UVA to penetrate, but they actually do a lot more harm. And that wasn't really recognized initially because they don't cause the same redness or burn that we recognize. So there's um, a star rating that was developed for UVA. So four, five star rating, developed by Boots actually, believe it or not, but that's sort of the generally accepted measure. And so what you want is a sunscreen that has as high an SPF, ideally 50 or above. You can get 80s and things in the States, but 50 or above, um, uh, and a four or five star UVA, or some of them will say, for example, very high protection or broad spectrum protection. And then the other thing that's come up, that comes about in conversation is um, chemical or physical sunblocks. So the ones that we all had would traditionally use were chemical blocks. They're the ones that sting your eyes a bit, they stink, sting a little bit, and you put them on, um, and they don't, they don't leave any cast, so you, can't, you don't really see them on your skin. And then the other types are physical blocks. So chemical blocks absorb, absorb UV rays and physical blocks reflect UV rays. And the traditional UV physical blocks um, would have been zinc and titanium. And they're the ones that when I was a kid, my parents used to put on my nose if I was going outdoors for a long time and they were blue or white. And I mean, they're totally socially unacceptable. But with the advent of nanotechnology, they've made those particles now so small that they're now transparent and so a lot of people prefer those because they you can put them on immediately before you go out you don't have to wait 20 minutes for them to activate they won't stain your collars yellow or wreck your car if you put your hand on it um, and but really the best sunscreens are one that have um, a, a broad spectrum so that have often have a bit of chemical and a bit of of physical um, and there's loads of really good sunscreens that are available really inexpensively now. So there's an explosion in sunscreens. Um, creams generally are better than, than other formulations. So you can get lotions and milks and creams and all sorts of other different formulations. But generally speaking, creams are better. But the most, the single most important thing about a sunscreen is that the person who's using it actually likes it. Um, because you, can, you just can't, you, you can't put something on you that you hate and wear it all day long. And you definitely can't reapply it again at lunchtime or reapply it every two hours this is the optimal but but you know so there, so they're the kind of things now there's in terms of actual brands i mean we could be here all day i mean from you know the ones that i i find that personally if i buy very expensive products i don't tend to use them i tend to spare them and in order to get the spf that's written on the bottle you have to put on two grams per centimeter squared which is effectively a whole shot glass of sunscreen and studies show that most people put on 0.75 of a gram of sunscreen per centimeter squared so just sort of about 40 30 40 percent of what we should wear and um, now that's still a lot better than nothing and you still get a reduction in the uv carcinogenesis um, but uh, you know you're not, not going to use a lot of something too expensive or something that you hate so i mean most of the commercially available sunscreens now are super i mean we see a lot of people using things like la roche posay and um you know those but like little naldi sunscreens are excellent and um, you know there's a lot of the, the la roche posay do and um, one called ultra ultra high protection face fluid which we use a lot for 
particularly people with genetic syndromes who are very susceptible to um, UV uh, damage. But there's, look, there's absolutely piles. There's one that's very inexpensive you can get online on Amazon called Altruist, which is absolutely excellent and really inexpensive, as good as any of these top brand, um, you know, sort of cosmetically priced sunscreens. So there isn't a wrong answer yeah. to sunscreen. Yeah, because yeah, it's quite a, it's quite a maze you know when you start it talking is. about sun creeps totally yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, could uh, i just raise a few additional questions i think in, you know I, I work with farmers you know and i think i yes. know what they think you know how they think yes. and i accept your message you know we're not no talking is not we, we don't give health messages we accept your messages and i think sunscreen is important but is not clothing uh, higher up on the hierarchy, really? Absolutely. To, uh... I mean, clothing is, up, is absolutely higher up. And of course, we all used to, you know, the, the sort of traditional thing of everyone working with their tops off is probably reducing over time, I guess, but uh, st still a very frequent thing. Um, but clothing is really important. And this, you can, the, thing with, the thing with standard clothing is that, for example, linens or white clothes, anything you hold up to the light, if you can see through it, then it is not giving you sufficient sun protection. So it needs to be sort of a, a tight weave. You can purchase specific UV protective clothing. Well, obviously that's more expensive than what you go and you buy in you know, your local shop, but there are specific UV protective clothing and um, that are kind of lightweight and given UV protective factor. Um, but, but, but clothes are much better than sunscreen. Sunscreen is from places you can't cover. No, but, but will, will clothing, the right clothing, uh, reduce the need for sunscreen? Like Absolutely, your, and it's far your, better. It's far better. Yeah. So if you're not reapplying your clothes. I mean, not, none of us in reality remember to always reapply sunscreen. Whereas if you put your clothes on and you leave them on, your job's done, you know. Right. But you want, you know, back of the hands, ears, you sort of lower face that isn't covered by a hat, you know, like places like your face where you get reflected light as well as like coming down from the top does need sunscreen even with a hat on. So um, you get about a third of the UV in the shade if you're sitting under you know a shaded area as you do if you're out in the bright sunlight. So even having even just the sh just the shade from a hat isn't quite sufficient. It's, it's optimal to have both. Okay, and sorry, one final while I have the floor uh, mm -hmm. as it were. Now I listened to a, a seminar by yourself a few days ago. You know, and Thanks, I, yeah. I you're tortured having to listen to me more than once. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Uh, no, but I, I was shocked at the the level of uh, you know how busy the dermatology. Uh, you know, you're a consultant dermatologist. Uh, you know uh, how busy your clinics were with a lot of outdoor workers, including farmers attending. You know, so so you might comment to the audience on that, and maybe one further point. You mentioned the forester who had a, a mole on his uh, on their ear. I don't know who it, who it was. Uh, you know, but you seem to indicate that the the person came much too late. You know, to to arrive to treatment. Yeah. Do well, so, so people arrive too late? You know, in terms of gaining the treatment. Well, I mean, I suppose on one level, we're we're, we're okay. So first of all, to address the first point, we see an excess of outdoor workers in our clinics so and um, you know and our gps will write and they'll say please see this person they're an outdoor worker and that will always prompt us to see people sooner because realistically you know we have people come in who are outdoor workers they might have two or three different cancers when they've walked through the door you know um, and some of them are more serious than others but you know we've, we've had a couple of pretty significant um diagnoses to make recently and and, that, and that's always the case so so but i suppose i was thinking about this after the last chat, because someone had said, oh, well, can you always blame the outdoor work, the UV and the outdoor work? I suppose people who like to be outdoors like to work outdoors. You know, you're not, people who are software engineers fundamentally don't like going outdoors. So I suppose it's not just within the workplace, but the whole yeah. healthy and, um, you know, outdoor sort of active attitude, um, you know, I suppose predisposes people to getting more sunlight. So we certainly see a lot more outdoor people, you know, particularly through occupation in the clinic. We have an enormous burden of skin cancer in Ireland, so there's but at least 13,000 a year um, new diagnosis, and a lot of people develop more than one skin cancer, so it's it's a huge burden. Um, uh, there's, I suppose, to some degree, if we could get in at primary prevention, so we can protect everyone from the sun before they develop skin cancer, that would be the optimal situation. Um, and for today's infants and <clears throat> very small children, that is a potential you know you know it's a realistic or, or at least realistic hope you know or aspiration and for any of us you know born more than 15 or 16 years ago we've all had way too much light already and so although it's really important that we reduce the number of new mutations that we pick up 
fundamentally, we are all at risk. So we know we can prevent 80-85% of skin cancers by preventing, by, by protecting ourselves from the sun, but we also got to be realistic. If you're going to be working outdoors, you're going to be outdoors, you know, so I suppose, uh, to, you know, so the, the first thing is primary prevention. The next thing then is picking things up early. And that's, that's a sort of a dual message. And I know that Kevin is working really hard to get this across so that the sooner we see people, the earlier things are picked up, the, 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 the less serious the cancer and the, um, you know, so the, less, the less serious treatment that patient will have, the less danger their health will be in. Um, you know, and, and all of those things, we want, we want to reduce that. You know? So um, we see two different presentations really in terms of cancer. So we see the moles that are changing and in one way, that's a sort of, that's a straight, that's a more straightforward message because if you develop, you know, you can say to people, you should know what your roles look like if they change or if you get a new one, particularly a new cohort, we need to see you. Doesn't mean there's something wrong, but we need to see you. And the second type of cancer are the ones, and you might remember the scalp I showed you, where, where they don't have any pigment, they don't have any color. It's a slightly more difficult message and, and Maria and the NCCP and, and Barbara and I are um, working really hard currently to develop a separate pathway for that nationally because of course we all get pink lumps and bumps in our skin and these aren't always as painful, they're not always uncomfortable, they're not always as noticeable as a new black mole and so that's a, that's a trickier one to look out for, it's a trickier one for people who haven't had a cancer to recognize. And um, so, you know, I suppose that the message really is if in doubt, see your GP and your GP re will refer to us, you know, um, but it is, you know, early detection is optimal for everybody, you know. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. That's brilliant, Blana. thank you very much indeed. Um, uh, there was just one question and I, I don't think I was able to answer it because someone asked a question about, is there a way of monitoring your own you know, molds or whatever, or is there an app you could use that would help, you know, yeah, to kind of there track? Are apps and there's kind of an explosion in skin technology. I mean, what yeah. I would say to people is just if you have someone else in your house who would be appropriate to ask, have, just have them take a photograph on your own smartphone, you know, um, and that's the for someone who doesn't have um, a very high statistical risk of getting a skin cancer or if somebody who's, you know, if you have somebody who's young and doesn't have a family history and has protect themselves well, there isn't a need to go at baseline, you know, there's no statistical value in going off and seeing someone at that stage, but having a photograph of your, if you have more than about five moles and anything else to think about, you won't remember what your moles look like. Um, and so I would always say to patients to just take a photograph on their phone or if people come into us, we'll often take a photograph on their phone for them. Those patients who don't require our input any further, but at least they have that and we'd say, look, check every three to six months, compare against the photographs. And if you're not sure, come back to us, you know, it's never, we'd always rather see people with nothing wrong than miss someone with something wrong. So I think that's, in all honesty, the most straightforward way. There are apps, but I don't think there's an advantage to, to an app. Brilliant. Thanks a million, that's really good. So um, unless there's any other questions from any of the panel or anyone else want to make a comment? No? Okay. Well, could I just ask one? You, know, you yep. mentioned the burden of cancer is likely to go up, you know, two or three times, if I recall it. I presume that's an account of increased uh, solar radiation, is it, or more intensive solar radiation? It's a few radiation. things. So, I mean, we're all living longer, and the, the longer your skin lives, the, the, the more likely it is to get skin cancer. That's one reason. Secondly, it's an explosion in travel. So, of course, you know, in the 50s and 60s, people didn't travel abroad so so frequently, um, and that's become more common. Of course, none of us get to go anywhere now. And then, um, thirdly, there's better diagnostics, and then, fourthly, there's just an, an increase. I mean, there's an unexplained increased risk of cancer at baseline. So there are a number of different factors co contributing to it. What we want is to catch all these 13,000 as early as possible. Though. But also, I suppose, global warming will have an influence as well. It in will. terms of UV intensity. UV penetration. Yeah, it does. It does. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's, it's, it, there isn't one straightforward answer, but, but we do know we can reduce it, which is the... Yeah. Okay, so it's it's been a really interesting kind of session this morning. We we could we could spend so much more time discussing all of these topics, but it, it's been really insightful. And thank you very much, Brian, for taking the time. Thank I know you have a busy clinic every you know and, and taking time for, to join us this morning. So thanks so much. Um, I suppose I just want to thank Chagas again for 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 facilitating the session this morning, and we look forward to continuing to work with Chagas um, on this whole issue. Um, I suppose 
In terms of the implementation of our national skin cancer prevention plan, we need as many people as possible to support us in this work and to try and promote our messages or, I mean, or any, if, you've, if, you've, can, if you'd like to support, you know, maybe um, communicating the message to, to, to your employees or, or wider community, please get in touch with us. We'd love to work with you on it. And uh, Maria has an, e an email there, pre prevention at cancercontrol.ie. Just drop us an email if there's any, even questions that we didn't address this morning, or if you want to engage with us uh, around this work. And we'd love to continue that. But um, I would hope we'll be able to kind of connect in again, uh, maybe in the future. I know John has some other work planned for us um, around, around skin cancer prevention. So we hope to engage further with Chagas. So again, just thanks to everyone. Thanks to all the speakers there, to Barbara, Maria, and then, and of course, to, to Vonit. And uh, so thanks again, John. So I'll hand back to you. Thank you. No, okay. Just no, just on behalf of Chavish, we're delighted to 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 work with you all, and and that now if the short term uh, agenda is to get the message out, and we're at the start of the summer season, so we will be using our uh, our media channels to get the message out. You know, along with yourselves, but I do also feel that there is a more long term. Uh, agenda there, both to re reduce sun, uh, uh, sun uh, skin cancer, uh, but also cancers in general. And, you know, we are delighted. Thank you for making contact with us, and we would be delighted to assist you in, in your work. Thank you. Sorry, one last quick point. I'd just like to thank my, my, my colleague, uh, uh, Francis Bly, and uh, his, his master's student, uh, you know, Blahing, uh, sorry, um, Penny, Gavin, you know, who, you know, who arranged this webinar. Thanks, and thank you again. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very Thanks, much. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Bye now. Bye. Bye, Bye now.